Shirt's on. Power on right there. Now this machine, we don't have a light inside of it. So it makes it a little more and more difficult to see things, but we're just doing the normal power on procedure, nothing special here. This is an older Haas, okay? So you're gonna find on older Haas's less and less things you gotta do. For example, <laughs> the alarm that's called up right now is simply the servos off. Notice how it's not even asking me to cycle the door. It doesn't care. A newer one, you can't do anything with the door open. On older hosses, you're gonna find you doing more and more. All you gotta do is power up restart, and it's a new homing cycle. So typically, always homes the Z first, just so it clears it out of the way, <coughs> and then it will do your X and Y axis. Okay. All right. So we got a couple of vices out here. First thing, of course, on a vice, cleanliness is everything to a machine shop. So you always want to make sure your vices are perfectly clean. There's no nicks on the bottom, okay, because that all affects the precision of your work. So I'm going to wipe this off, clean this off. If there were any nicks on the table or the vice, I would have stoned them off to make sure things are sitting nice and flat. That was already done. All right, so also the tooling we use. I use these little forged Tico T-nuts and bolts. What I like about these is they have an integrated washer on the nut, okay? These make lining vices easier because the problem is even with a standard washer, when you tighten it down, it tends to want to move the vise a little bit. With no washer, you're gonna move the vise all over the place. Okay, so having an integrated spinning washer on the nut really will help a line of ice. Now the first thing I do is I just look at it and I try to get it square. I've actually been spot on a few times. Okay? Now, at work I have a large precision square. I would actually take a large precision square, bump it up against a T-slot or my table, and I can get it kind of close with that, okay? It's not gonna be exact, but it's gonna just help me kind of get close to where I wanna be, okay? So lining up a vise, typically I'm gonna take one bolt on one side, and I'm gonna tighten it a little bit. I'm not gonna make it super tight, but I definitely wanna tighten it, because if I don't, I'm gonna up just a little bit, okay? And then I'm gonna take a soft mallet, and we're gonna use this for moving the vise, okay? By tightening one side, it's gonna make it act as a pivot. Now, I've got these indicators here, and you can put your indicator in a spindle, nothing wrong with that, okay? Just here in this, you know, we've had a few students accidentally forget about the indicator and turn the spindle on. Whee! Yeah. Yeah, so we've wiped out a few, uh, few indicators that way. So since then, I have moved to magnetic bases. I like these a lot because that can't happen with these guys. Okay, so we just take this guy. No tool holder even necessary. In fact, for those of you guys putting together your toolboxes, I highly recommend a little mag base like this. These are really handy. Okay, all right, so. Do we indicate this jaw right here? No, rear. That's no, because that's the movable jaw. That jaw is actually made to move around a little bit, adjust to your stock. We want the back jaw. We want the jaw that is key to the vise on a single station vise. On a double station vise, it may be the middle jaw we want, because that may be the key jaw. Okay, so know your vise and know what feature it is that you're aligning to, okay? Also, make sure that the indicator needle that you're dragging it on the ball of the tip. You're not accidentally on the shank. That's a common mistake people make too. Okay? Put that guy on there. 
there, we're looking pretty tight. I'm going to try to get out of the way when I do this. I don't know how much I can. You can see it without wrecking the indicator for you. I'm going to start off by just getting a light load on the indicator. Yeah, I'm off. Good. I don't like it when I'm off. Alright, so I'm going to load up the indicator. I'm going to just go, right now I got it right on about 5,000. And I'm going to just go across the vise. Okay, so it's dropping off. That's okay. All the pressure is that side. Thousands, fifteen thousands, there's twenty. Yeah, we're off a good twenty-five thousands. Okay. Again, that's fine. So at the very end of the vise, pretty much indicating the ten. So that would mean that as I come along, sometimes I'll even just go back there and I'll just press that just to make sure I get my direction straight. So as I put pressure on it. Needle goes this direction. So that means it's dropping off when it comes to this side here. So that means we're, we're tilted too far that way. Okay. So what I want to do get it off to this side of the vise, and I want to tap this corner of the vise. And I'm going to start off by just bringing this around to the same exact number that I have there. Now, technically, I'm kind of doing something a little bit like I shouldn't. You're not supposed to pound into your indicator the pressure's going into it. You should be going the opposite way. Keep it right to there. I'm a little closer now, aren't I? I'm a lot closer. So with that one side tight as a pivot, I'm going to go ahead and reset my indicator. Now I'm going to put it on the zero, and you can move the zero any time you want, just a reference position. So now, instead of being off by 25 thousandths, now I'm off by about 4 thousandths. Okay? It's not perfect. But when you tighten one side and use it as a pivot, it actually works pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to bring it to the zero. Let's see where I'm at now. About half a thousandth. So I would say it's well within being where it needs to be to line up a vise. So now the challenge is to tighten the vise up without moving the vise. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring this nut down. I'll do it by hand at first. And I'm going to snug this side up a little bit. And we'll go back to this side. And as I tighten things and I get tighter, I'm going to start making sure that in case my wrench does slip, I'm ready to fall in that direction. I'm ready to support myself. And I'll go back to this side. You want to be careful the side of your wrench does not hit the vise because that will actually move it off a little bit. Let's see if I move it. You may move it when you do this. I'm 
Now I'd go back and tighten it a little more. Again, I'm always making sure a foot's behind me or something. Just in case I slip, at least I don't fall backwards. Or same thing when I go forward, I'm ready to slip off. It's important that it's tight, okay? Because if you don't tighten it enough, the moment you go to the machine, you take a few cuts, it's gonna move this thing, okay? All right, so that is the procedure on aligning the vise. When you get it all done, okay, I want to check it, I want to see it. This is like one of the most important things you can do is get things properly lined up on the table. You will scrap work if you don't do this correctly. Okay? And if, now, when you tighten this up, you don't need to kill it tight, but actually, if you're cutting parts in a shop, you got to get it pretty tight. That's why I say it's important to really crank it down and do it evenly. A little here, a little there, a little here, a little there. Alternate. Don't do one side first, because you will knock this thing off, okay? Um, a lot of shops, a lot of handy way to make this a little faster is use a ratchet wrench. I do have 7 8 ratchet that we don't really use too much here, but if I'm in my shop I, and I get extensions, that allows you to put your devices close together, closer together, okay? You don't need room for the wrench when you get a nice ratchet and stuff like that. So. There's other types of vices where you don't even have to worry about the clamps on the outside. There's all sorts of different products out there. Any questions?